Well, yesterday in the interview, um, I realized that I, I didn't know nothing. And then I was thinking, um, when I come home, how can I help my children? You can help them very, very simply. When they are hungry, you feed them. When they are sleepy, you put them to their little bedroom. When they need to play, you take them out of the playground. Very simple. This don't know is not the lack of information, it's the absence of ignorant views. So if your mind is clear, it is clear like space, clear like a mirror. That means you perceive your children very well. You can see really how they are, what kind of little thoughts they have, what kind of emotions they have, what kind of urges or needs they have. That's one of the biggest trainings of, you know, young parents that there's this little baby, my baby, and she doesn't talk. And she's crying and she's peeing and she's pooping and I have to take care of this little human being and we can't talk. And I have to see without words, without any thinking, with very deep human heart-to-heart -heart communication, what this little being needs, who she is, what she becomes, etc. So for that, this don't know is very useful. It takes out any preconceptions, any expectations, any false ideas, any illusions. Then you can have, help them really well. Okay? It's actually the root of becoming one, becoming really compassionate and have some non-dualistic wisdom. Your children will love you for that. They will say later, oh, mommy is wise. Mommy is compassionate. We love mommy. And they don't know why, because it's so natural. Don't talk to them about Zen, even when they can understand it. They should follow their own inquiries. They should answer their own questions. If they happen to be interested in Zen by themselves, so be it. But treat it as naturally as, as if it was just something, something really everyday and common. So clarity and simplicity is not a property of any religion or spiritual school. It's us, basically. It's ours. Use that. If we go to primary point, uh, where originally there's nothing, uh, do correct function, correct situation and correct relationship automatically arise in? If you use primary point correctly, then they do. If you attach to primary point, you lose everything. Some people get attached to emptiness, they become cigarette men. They are the champions of nothing. That's the biggest mistake a practitioner or any human being can make. If you use primary point, then after attaining this, sky is blue, trees are green, birds are chirping outside. Then somebody is hungry, give them food. Somebody is thirsty, give them drink. Very simple. But if people become attached to primary point, they become like the living dead, like a Zen zombie. What does it mean, the um, goodbye process for, from someone who's dying? Well, saying farewell to the deceased or someone who is dying is very important because if you don't let them go, they cannot proceed on their way. You hinder them because you attach to them. So the goodbye process is first you say thank you for everything that we could share on a joyful basis, that we could help each other, had a lot of fun, had great times. Next is I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the mistakes I made and everything that I received on a painful basis. These two. And then goodbye is possible. Goodbye means I realize that we will no longer live together on this earth because one of us is going and not return. So this is important because if we don't let the person go, we remain in an illusion and we hinder the soul, the being of the other person from going on its own path, his or her path. To the next life. So do not identify with the person that you knew as the one who died, because that is gone. 
that image, that face no longer exists because the body was left. The soul departed. And then that image, that person, no matter how real it still feels in your heart, is gone. No longer exists. And it's very, very painful to see that liberation also works like that. That your own illusions of your own self, they no longer exist, but you are still in this body. You are not who you think you are. This person, this self-image you entertained as yourself is gone. But that's exactly what the Buddha realized under the Bodhi tree. There were three major groups of illusions. One is desire, the daughters of Mara. The other is anger, those arrows that were shot towards him and later on became these petals and fell down. That was his desire karma and his anger karma. But the biggest was ignorance when he met himself as an image. And he didn't believe that. He didn't believe that he is this body. He didn't believe that he is identical with his emotions, his thoughts, his feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness. Like the Heart Sutra says, the five skandhas are originally empty. That's when your self-image dies and disappears. And that's when you are free. Consequently, that's how you can liberate others. When you don't attach to them. So cherish the moment while we are here together. Because when that moment is gone and one of us is missing, it's not coming back. And it's correct that it's not coming back. We have to understand that. Okay?